Well, how do you do, everybody? We're out here on this little pond, a uh, public pond. Do a little bit of fishing with the average fishing rig. Now, we got a lot of wind and some overcast, but we're still going to see how it does. Normally, the water is like really, really clear out here, but because of the waves and everything, you know, it's kind of stirring things up. You can't really see the bottom all that well. But we're still going to give her a try. My strategy today is to throw it out there and retrieve it. <laughs> I don't have a plan. So that's all it's going to be. Ooh. Heavy winds today. Sorry if the wind noise is a problem. I won't know about it until I get back to the house and try to upload this thing. But we're just going to see what happens. I'm moving it around more than I normally do. Because I'm trying to maintain a little bit of contact with it as the wind is blowing it into me. That's a lot of wind, man. Probably should have used a uh, heavier weight instead of just these little one tenth ounces. So this place that I'm fishing, honestly, is one of the most highly pressured places in the area around here. Um, it's a pretty big area, but hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of people fish here. And most of the people, unfortunately, don't do the catch and release thing. So years back, it was loaded with nice bass, right? And I used to come down here, I would catch a few and then go home, throw them back, of course. But not everybody does that, of course, as you know. I mean, there's a lot of people who would, you know, everything they caught, they take home. And for that reason, the bass population here has really, really suffered. Um, it's gotten to the point now where everybody says, you know, if you come out here and you catch one, even small bass, you've really accomplished something because people have just, you know, taking the fish out to the rate that it's just there's hardly any left and it's pretty much everything like brim too i mean people would come out and keep brim that are tiny and i do mean tiny like this big and take those things home uh, i don't know why you would want to do something like that but that's that's what exactly what happened and because of that the fishing here has really well for lack of a better way to put it kind of gone to shit but I'm still here just to see if I can entice anything to bite, if there's anything around. Because I know with the average fishing rig, if I find the fish, I can get them to bite. And a lot of it is covered, I don't know if you guys can pick this up on camera, but this grassy cover along the bottom, that's what the majority of this lake is. It's grassy. So just lots of hydrilla, you know, tons of it, in fact. And that's one of the reasons I like the average fishing rig. It comes through that stuff pretty well. So just to show you guys how snagless this thing is, I'm going to throw it across these lilies, whatever you want to call them, grasses, and I'm going to drag it back through them. You can see where I landed my cast. This is all hydrilla here. Um, on the bottom, but I want to show you guys me dragging it through whatever this, whatever this kind of plant is and show you that, you know, it's not completely snagless, but it's pretty hard to get hung up. And you can see I'm right on the edge of those lilies there or whatever the grasses are. You can see the bait coming through. There we go.
you see me dragging it up and over through that grass. And I'm just kind of working it in there. See that? And that's why I really like the average fishing rig. Works like a Ned rig, but it's more versatile because I can fish it in way more places without the worry of it getting snagged and hung up and you know that kind of stuff. It's like I said, it's not snag proof and it will get hung up on occasion, but it's it's I can pull it through some pretty heavy stuff like like these grasses here. And I know with relative confidence that you know I, I'm able to pull it through here and it's it's not really gonna get snagged up. You see me pulling it through a thick part right here. There you go. See that? And there you go. So you see it's uh it's pretty it's pretty snagless. Got one this time. He came out from the middle. Yeah. Got him from about 40 yards offshore. There you go. I'm trying to get him unhooked here. He's hooked pretty good. These little these little Ned hooks, or these little rigging hooks really do the job. I have to pull my bait out of the way so I can grab the hook point here. Let me stop it while I unhook him. All right, I got him undone here. Nice, pretty little bass. Three quarter pounder with cheese. <laughs> there you go, go back little buddy. All right, let me fix my lure up here, and we'll uh, we'll try to catch another one. It's important to point out, and I, want, I guess this is as good as time as any to point it out, is that you're not always going to feel a bite, okay, using, using this technique. Sometimes, and I'd say probably 50% of the time, what happens is you just lose contact with the lure. So while I'm bouncing it along the bottom and stuff like that, I can feel the weight, you know, and I can feel the lure kind of popping up off the bottom, you know, that kind of thing. And what happens is when a bass grabs it, when you go to twitch the line, you may not have felt the initial bite, but you, you all of a sudden notice that you can't feel the bait bouncing along the bottom anymore. Set the hook. Because <laughs> that's often what happens when they just hold it in their mouth and sit there you'll notice that you just don't feel the line or the lure or the weight anymore. Go ahead and set the hook. That's, that's a good indicator that a bass has grabbed it. And I've caught at least half of the fish that I've caught using this rig that exact way. Like suddenly you just lose contact with the lure and you can't feel it anymore. Set the hook, man. I couldn't catch the hook set on camera because it automatically turned off, but I caught this little guy. Caught him right about where those weeds end on the other side. Man, I really gotta start trimming the barbs down on these things. I'm just catching and releasing anyway. It's about a half pound. More. Let me stop the camera. I'll show him to you once I get him off. All right, got him off. Little quarter pounder with cheese here. Going back. Average fishing rig, guys. I just wanted to make a quick video to show you guys how to use it and uh, show the fact that it is effective. These are not big bass in here. There's not going to be big bass in here because um, 
well, everybody catches them and takes them home. So that's a foregone conclusion, but I wanted to come out to a place that I know is super heavy pressure as far as fishing goes and show you guys that this thing will work even under those circumstances where there's a lot of fishing pressure, this rig works. All right guys, so a totally different kind of scenario with the same lure, just to show you how versatile this is. Um, we're in this creek here. I forget the name of it. Or if you're a big John Wayne fan, a crick. Squirrels cutting nuts behind me, dropping them on the ground. So gonna throw the average fishing rig out show you guys what happens oh had a bite yep looky there I'll wrap my bait all up that was I didn't feel a, a tick that was that scenario where I was telling you where I lost contact with the lure and I couldn't feel it anymore, so I set the hook. Because I can feel it bouncing on the bottom. There's another little deeper spot over here that I'm going to go try in a little bit, but you have to fish from way up there. Dragging it along. See, I switched from the bounce to the drag just to see what would happen. Got him. Oh, what is that? Told you guys, it's a war mouth. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> Average fishing rig catches everything, man. I'm telling you. Proof. There you go. All right, I'm gonna walk up over to this little waterfall here. Water's pretty clear, surprisingly clear for this spot. Um, throw it against that far bank there, see what happens first. See some turtles. Saw a little tiny bluegill chase it. I mean, he was tiny though. And I do mean tiny. We go a little closer to this tree here. All right, I just hit bottom. Bluegills are pecking at it. Got him. Creek bass. <laughs> there you go. right in the roof of the mouth. Just like you want it. Come on fella, let me get you undone here. I don't, don't want to sore lip him. Woo, got him. Feisty little creek bass. show you guys this he does not have the hook he just didn't let go look at this look at this guys 
<laughs> He's just holding on to it. Let it go. Let it go. There we go. <laughs> Another little creek bass, and I think this is going to be the end. Yep. All right. Let's go home.